What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's December 6th. Happy Friday. In this video, we will review all the trades, all the alerts. This is exclusively for our pro members. So welcome. Let's jump in to the community and check out who got caught being hot this week. As I mentioned, the women of the trade hacking community are bringing the heat lately. Another woman trade hacker. Uh, congrats, Evelyn. You got caught being hot. And, you know, I've always I've always kind of thought that it's interesting how there are not more women traders. I mean, looking at our our numbers and our kind of demographics of our membership, I mean, it's literally over 95 percent men. But I, and I really think just kind of the there's a closing bell, uh, just kind of the mental makeup of women is actually better suited for trading than men a lot of times. But for whatever reason, uh, not as many women trade. So I love seeing the women in the trade hacking community. Keep it up. Congrats, Evelyn. You got caught being hot. All right, let's go, let's go to the alerts. Starting with Monday, the 2nd. Uh, first trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZB, the bonds. So we had two different sets of short strangles on in the bonds. Closed out one of them, booked over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. We're still down overall on the trade, but uh, wanted to reduce risk, get rid of this piece, book some profits, and then um, and then we'll, we'll deal with the other piece, which I'll get to here in a minute because we had another uh, adjustment to that trade today. Next trade was an opening trade in Google. So we did a an iron duck in Google at that point with 11 days to expiration. We actually took that off today. Uh, had such a big move to the upside, took that off for the beak profit. And so we are actually out of that one. Instead of holding it all the way to expiration, we had less than a 10% chance of getting back to the duck head. So we went ahead and booked that. Next trade, opening trade in Roku. So we did a reverse iron duck in Roku. Had some decent call skew, meaning the calls were trading richer than the put. So we we were able to do the reverse iron duck. Put this on with 11 days to expiration. So let's check. Uh, uh, let's take a look at that one. Roku. So we've got we've got two pieces in Roku. This is the first one. Uh, this one actually expires today. So like you heard, the closing bell just happened. So we'll book uh, beak profits on this of 122 bucks. So not not a lot, but hey, you know what? It's a winner. No risk to the downside on the reverse. And then we've got this one here where price is just kind of hanging out right here, just starting to enter the uh, the duck snout. We, <laughs> we like to call that. So, um, you know, if we can just kind of hang out right here, get a little bit lower into next week, into the end of next week, got a possible chance for a duck head here. And so that's where we're at in Roku. Next trade, we've got uh, an opening adjusting trade in Ford slash GC. So we opened up an iron condor in GC and then we closed the other one. So you can almost think of this as rolling. Um, you know, we just moved out to the next cycle. You can't. A, you can't technically roll futures in one transaction. And then because an iron condor is a four-legged spread, we're not going to roll that. We can't roll that in one transaction. So it's really just two different things. So we entered a new one, closed that one out. The one that we closed, we booked over 50% of max profit on that piece. And then so we're still, we're still uh, in this gold iron condor. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, price moved down in gold, pretty decent today, over a percent. So you can see price is hanging out right here, kind of in the lower quadrant, but well inside the uh, the range here on gold. Next trade was an opening trade in Booking.com, BKNG. We added a, a new iron duck in Booking. Did this one with 17 days to expiration. Price has moved higher. It's all the way, it's already all the way up the duck beak. Um, so we're, you know, at this point, we've got about a 12% chance of getting back into the duck head. And so, you know, if price kind of stays up here into Monday, we are not going to hold this. I mean, like I said, we've got, at this point, we've got 14 days to expiration. So there's really no reason to hold that for another 14 days. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that out Monday. Again, per our criteria, we like to, if there's under 10% chance of getting back to the duck head, we like to just close those out. Next trade, closing trade in Shopify. So Shopify got us this week. 
Uh, we had two closing trades uh, in Shopify for a couple losers. Had a massive move up. Uh, for those of you that were in this trade, S H O P. Um, let's go to my three month daily here. I mean, we just had we had this. You know, we got in um, on this day here, and, and when when the market was down, and it just so it had three rips higher. Rip, rip, rip. And that's a that's a pretty substantial move. I mean, we're talking from, you know, depending on where we got in, you know, three fifteen up to three seventy in in the matter of a couple of days. You know, you just you can't sustain that, even though it's a high probability trade. Uh, we got smoked out of a couple of those Shopify ducks, uh, and we've got another one on. So you you can't be afraid to jump back in. You got to look at kind of every trade as a separate probability. Uh, I know I know some people will say, well, I'm not trading Shopify. It, you know, I got hurt in it last time. Well, that doesn't really have anything to do with what it'll do this time. But I understand the feeling. Uh, so anyway, we've got uh, one of one of the next alerts was adding another reverse duck in Shopify. So here we are, and, and price is hanging out right here. And so you know, obviously, if if Shopify Shopify goes back down, we'll collect that big profit. If we get a continuation to the upside, hopefully not too far, we you know we will have a chance at a duck head. Now this is December twentieth, so this isn't even next week. We've got fourteen days to expiration, uh, so we will see what happens in Shopify. Shopify owes us some money, so hopefully it'll give it back with the next trade or two. And the next trade was a closing trade in forward slash CL oil. So we closed out our short strangle, booked over thirty percent of max profit. Got a really nice contraction in implied volatility on that day. Give us a chance to just get out of that with a nice quick winner. Next trade, closing trade in Shopify. So that, that was the second one I mentioned. Next trade, uh, opening. So this is the one we opened. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping ahead. So we already, already covered that. That's the one we just showed. Next one, opening trade in RH. So we did a earnings iron duck in RH. This one just had two days to expiration. And so this uh, worked out fine for us. It, 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 after the announcement, price really ran higher. So we were in the duck beak. We we're going to collect the duck beak profit. And then what happened is last night in the overnight session, which is when it typically happens, uh, we got assigned. And so what happened is we got assigned on one. So we, did, we were doing two contracts on the trade. We got assigned on one of our 192 half calls. Now, I know a lot of people in the community were in this trade, and I don't know if anybody else even got assigned. You know, it's kind of, it can be kind of random sometimes. And so we had two contracts. We only got assigned on one of them. And so what we did is we just closed out the rest of the trade. I, uh, so I sent out an alert. We had to do it kind of in legs because, because it was an odd number versus our, our even number of contracts. Uh, so we just, we basically closed out the short stock that we were assigned and we closed out the remaining calls and we just left on this, this put vertical spread, which is what you'll see here. So that'll just disappear. It'll expire worthless. And so we essentially just booked the, uh, beak profit, of that duck overall. You know, a lot of people get a little bit freaked out about assignment. We do have a mini course all about options assignment. So make sure you check that out. It's not really that big of a deal. If you get assigned, what we typically do is we just close it out. And you know, your risk doesn't change. Nothing really changes. We we went it, we we ended up just booking that beak profit. So it's no different than had it expired. We had to pay a couple extra bucks in commission to close those out, but not that big of a deal. So this part of trading, uh, it's going to happen from time to time, especially with these trades that you're holding close to expiration. It's just part of it. When you have in the money options that close to expiration, that deep in the money, uh, especially after with RH, I mean, look at this huge move up. I mean, it was so far in the money and, and that's why we got assigned. So not a big deal, but that's what happened in RH. By the way, if you want to know more about that, if you're still not quite sure, just based on that brief recap, Go to the community. I posted two different videos, one before the market even opened, alerting our members about the situation. And then one, after I closed it and kind of legged out and pieced out, I wanted, I thought it warranted more uh, clarification. So I recorded another video. So those are in a post in the community. So if you have questions about that, uh, feel free to check that out. Next trade, opening trade in Ulta. So another earnings iron duck. And this one, kind of same situation. It's like Groundhog Day. The market goes up, 
up, up, up, up. I don't think it's it's not allowed to go down is, is what I'm starting to learn. Uh, so uh, another earnings, Iron Duck and Ulta. So let's take a look at that. Uh, this is another one that we're just going to let expire. Where's Ulta? There it is. So big move up after earnings, as you see. And here is our Iron Duck. So price is way out here. Uh, the options are going to get exercised and assigned. Toss in the U.S. doesn't charge any fees for that, so that's why we're not wasting any commission to exit. Uh, we'll book a profit of 130, which is our uh, beak profit. Next trade, closing trade in RUT. So we had a weekly double calendar on in RUT. Booked a nice profit of over 450. I think it was 460 to be exact. Um, the uh, front week options were set to expire the following day. So we kind of look at that as anywhere from one one day or less until expiration. We like to get out of that either on expiration day or one day before. And so we had some nice profit. Didn't want to let that get away. So we went ahead and booked that. Next trade, opening trade in Costco. So we did a pre-earnings long straddle in Costco just targeting 15%. These are, you know, we, we just try to book small profits on these. Um, you know, we had a nice contraction. Let me show you the chart of Costco. A nice contraction in implied volatility, and it went even further today. Um, but we've got earnings coming up next week. Okay, so we've got earnings right here on the 12th, I believe. Let me double check that. Uh, yeah, 12, 12 after market. And so look at this implied volatility. It's just, it's just contracting. So by buying a straddle, we want implied volatility to expand or go higher. And we want to a decent move in the price of the stock. So either decent move down or a decent move up. We don't care. So that's what this looks like on the risk profile graph. And so you can see prices hanging out right here. We're down a little bit. I mean, just a huge contraction in implied volatility today. So if we can get a little bit of an expansion going in and a price to move one way or another, we'll be in good shape and hopefully can book a profit on that before the earnings announcement. We do not hold these through earnings. We want to be out before the announcement happens to avoid the IV crush. Next trade, closing trade. That was the RH one. Like I showed, I bought back those uh, short shares that we were assigned. We bought back the 192 half call. And then we are letting the put vertical expire worthless to collect that beak profit. And then uh, rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So what we did here, and, and by the way, I got a lot of questions on the, uh, the role of this from some newer members. So when you are trading options on futures and you need to roll those options to the next cycle, the exchanges and then hence the brokers don't support rolling options on futures in one transaction, okay? So you have to do it in two separate ones. And that's why the alert looks like this. So essentially we're buying back our current piece and we're reselling it in the next cycle. And then we can adjust our strikes too, which, is, which we did in this case. We adjusted our calls from 164 to 161, kept our puts at 161. And so now we have the short 161 straddle in the next cycle, but you've got to do that in two separate transactions. It's a pain. It's not as, it's not as easy. It's not as efficient as equities, but it accomplishes the same thing. We're buying this back for 330 and we sold it for 436. So you're getting that net credit just like you would if you rolled a, an equity uh, product. Okay. So it's the same thing. Just got to do it in two different steps. Uh, there was also, there's very little value left in the calls with bonds moving down. So we rolled our calls down and then with just 21 days to expiration, we rolled it all out to the next cycle with 49 days to expiration. Another thing, again, a reminder, the different brokers display the, the month title on these options on futures a little bit differently. So what, what Toss labels as Jan and Feb, Tastyworks might label as December January. So always pay attention to these days to expiration. You know, we're always going to be doing this between that 30 and 60 days to expiration. So when you're getting ready to do this, make sure you're checking the DTE, not necessarily what they're calling the actual uh, future cycle. Okay. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in ZW. So we added an iron condor in wheat. Uh, we did have the ability, we, we, well, here, first of all, here's, here's the one we just added. 
So we just did this today. So price is right here centered. No profit or loss yet. The other piece of this, the one in the previous cycle, we, we certainly could have taken off today, but I just figured, hey, let's give it over the weekend, see if we can squeeze a little bit more juice out of this. But we're over 50% of max profit on this piece, and we'll, uh, we'll take that off probably first thing on Monday. Now, we're going to be kicking ourselves if we get a huge move, uh, you know, on Sunday night or, or before the market opens on Monday. But, you know, assuming just kind of normal market action, we should be able to squeeze a few more shekels out of this one. Uh, next trade, and lastly, was the closing trade in Google. So I already mentioned that. We put on that iron duck in Google earlier this week, and just a few days later, booked a big profit, and we were out of Google. So this can, this this market just continues to be super strong. I mean, what we were looking for, I, I put out a, a video last night just kind of with some thoughts, and, and my anticipation was after this big flush down, we are getting this little bit of a pullback, and I was looking for a potential rollover, knowing that the non-farm payroll and jobs reports were coming out before the cash opened today. Uh, I anticipated a downside. Well, that's not what happened. We exploded higher. And so what, what now, right? So, I mean, nothing, nothing changes. I mean, that, that's simply an assumption, right? And, and you can play that assumption with different short Delta. We already had some short Delta. I didn't, I didn't put on any more short Delta based on that. Uh, actually I did in my personal account, but not, not in the alerts portfolio. Uh, but so now, you know, what, what's happened is, are we off to the races to the upside and just going to continue to hit new high after new high after new high? Uh, well, that's certainly an option. Uh, or we could we could you know still roll over. So we'll see what happens. You know we're 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 positioned with short delta. So anytime a big rip higher like this happens, you know obviously that doesn't feel good on those short delta positions. But at the same time, if this thing tanks or if it did tank, then you you want that short delta. So it's you know you just need to find that balance of what works well for you. Right now we're about three to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So, and that's beta weighted to spy. So for every dollar of theta we have, we have about minus $3 of delta or $3 of short delta. And so we are, we are definitely positioned for a downside, but we're also, you know, I mean, if it, if it does go higher, is that going to hurt our profits? Yeah. But I also think it's a necessary evil to have. So that's the plan. Uh, I've gone over all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with forward slash 6B, the uh, the British pound. Uh, you can see we've had a little bit of a rally in the British pound lately as well. And so here is our short strangle that we've got on. Uh, still well within range. We've got some profit here. If we can get a little bit of a bounce back in a little bit more implied volatility contraction, we could get out of this one early next week. CL, we've got this iron duck in CL. You can see we're up in the in the duck beak. If it moves much higher and we get down under that 10% probability of getting back in the duck head, we may close this one out early next week. Uh, ES, we've got this long put vertical. Price has moved with a strong market, moved right outside the range, uh, holding this for that short delta exposure. I mentioned gold. Natty gas, big move down today. I'm just big, I mean... We're talking three to seven percent moves in nat gas almost every day it seems like uh so a decent move down in nat gas uh, we had reduced our exposure by buying back one of our other sets of short strangles and so if price does kind of move near one of our break-evens we are not going to hesitate to add another piece uh, especially with the implied volatility levels that we're continuing to see in natty gas if we take a look at the corresponding uh, ETF, which is UNG, you know, IV percentile 86, IV rank of 55. So nice and juicy options in there. Would like to get another piece to that on uh, if, if, uh, if it presents itself. Oops, let me get back to the platform. Uh, let's see what else we got. Bonds, I mentioned. Wheat, I mentioned. Apple. Apple continues to be just a monster to the upside. We've got this short delta piece on, so price has moved out of our range. We'll look to either roll or close this uh, potentially next week if it, if it continues higher. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to hold steady for now, hoping it gets back into range at some point. Uh, Adobe, we've got this uh, pre-earnings long strangle. It's almost a straddle, but you can see um, it's just one strike apart. Uh, price has just kind of stayed in this little range, so we're down down a little bit. So just waiting, looking for price to make a decent move 
outside and and so we to to book a profit. So we'll see what happens. Adobe announces earnings on 12/12, so we've got a few days into next week for that to happen. Again, we just like the Costco one, we're going to close this before the earnings announcement. So um, we're looking for a for a quick move before that. If not, we'll just close it out. Uh, other earnings before I move on here, other earnings to look at for next week. AVGO, which is Broadcom. I mentioned Adobe, Costco, uh, AutoZone, Lululemon, Oracle. So some decent earnings next week. Uh, uh, so, uh, several of those with Iron Duck earnings potential as well. So we will be checking out those and look for posts about that in the community from both us as well as other members. Amazon. Amazon, oh, Amazon. So we've got this Iron Duck in Amazon. It expires next week. Friday, and you can see prices right here in the duck head. So if we can kind of, if we stay right here, we'll book a nice, nice duck head profit. Obviously, we've got a, a full week of trading before that happens, but hopefully it stays in this range. Uh, booking, I mentioned booking, yeah. Costco, I mentioned DE, John Deere. We've got this uh, short call vertical here. Uh, we're at a point where we, we could even take this off or roll it. I'm going to continue to keep this for some of that short delta exposure. Um, kind of what I was talking about before we got this big push down, we've kind of rallied up and hopefully we can get a little bit more of a rollover in John Deere. So we'll see what happens there. DIA, we've also got a couple of short delta positions, a couple of short call verticals with this strong move up. Price has moved out of range, so we just need a little downside to get back in there. Same with IWM and same with QQQ. So kind of singing the same dance, singing a dance, singing the same song on that one. Um, so that's the, that's the deal there. Uh, RH, I mentioned that one. Roku, I mentioned. Shopify, I mentioned. SMH, we've got this short strangle. Price is hanging out up here in the upper end of the range. Uh, I was hoping to get on another piece in, um, SMH, but man, this implied volatility contracted quickly. And so we didn't, we didn't get one on. Uh, I was wait, you know, I wanted price to be kind of near the break even, but also have that higher IV, and uh, implied volatility just collapsed. So now it's down into the 10 range. So not looking to add to that. Just going to manage our current position. SPX, we have today expires one of our ducks. So we're going to collect a beak profit of 115. You'll see that alert go out after the market closes. Uh, and then we've also got this other one, which expires next week or December 16th, I should say. And you can see prices hanging out right here. So we've got about a, let's line up our calendars here, put it on 1217. Uh, you know, so we've still got over a 30% chance, 32% chance that it could come back down into our duck head. So we're not looking to take that one off yet, uh, but the one does expire today for beak profit. So if we get some decent action next week, we will, well, probably even if we don't, we'll probably add another, Another SPX iron duck. I like to have at least a couple of those on at any given point. SPY, we've got this short call vertical, which was originally part of an iron condor price outside the range, which is a similar story to our other short delta positions. I mentioned Ulta, uh, be, uh, booking the beak profit there. And then lastly, XLK, another short delta position. We need some downside to get back into range on that one, or we'll be looking to either close or roll that. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Look for those earnings plays next week, whether either it just posts in the community or actual official alerts. And then um, the other thing I was oh, the other thing I was gonna mention is bonds. So let's go to ZB. Uh, where are you, ZB? There you are. So the other thing is with with bonds, the uh, the implied volatility is really high. So this is the one we just adjusted. So it's the 61 straddle um, with and, and price is kind of hanging out here near that lower end of the range. So what we might look to do is add to this. Uh, if we look at TLT, let's go to the chart and look at the corresponding ETF. Uh, you can see implied volatility is nice and high. IV percentile 73, IV rank 44. And so we may look to add another strangle in ZB, just kind of centered around, centered around the current price here, kind of like that. No, that wasn't very good. If this is the price, it's going to be more like this. Let's see if I can use my skills. 
There we go. So anyway, just kind of spreading out those break evens, uh, taking advantage of that high implied volatility. So that's the plan in bonds. Hope everybody has a great weekend. If you have any questions, let us know.